right. to it. Tight. Well, but man, that chips with the dip. It was so good. It was testing it so i was testing the sides barely picks up anything okay. and it only picks up right away wait i'm getting you guys new microphones i'm working on it i just gotta save some money well, how much do they cost the ones that i want to get 400 a piece sponsorships like something like that. <laughs> they're they're exactly like this throw one. us a freaking bone here throw us a freaking bone here scott anyway so as a comedian he laughs too much as it own has his own jokes mm. Like a lot. Oh, yeah. But then when he breaks into like his other podcasts, especially when he's on The Fighter and the Kid with Brian Callen and Brendan Schaub, it's so funny, man. And like his own thing is funny because he like does reactions to other things. And it's actually a lot funnier. And I enjoy him laughing at his own jokes there than on stand. Like then when he does a stand up, it's super weird. Nice. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the F Word Podcast. An affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. Affiliate? Part yes. of? Okay. Is it affiliate? Well, I think affiliate sounds better. And it sounds more professional. For, yeah. Well, not only that. The SAS Podcast Network, which is now, I think, a couple weeks old, uh, still in its soft launch, was has been now like making the rounds. Like It was on CBC for mm-hmm. our friends, not in this, like not in Canada. CBC is like this nationwide uh, news outlet. Canadian yes. Broadcast Canadian, Corporation. Yeah. Canadian. What? It's like... It, just to try to like explain what it is. It's almost like yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of like the CNN, but not politically CNN. Let's put it that way, or like a Fox or something like that. And so, uh, yeah, it's getting out there. Was and I interview audio, or was it? She was just like shaking. Literally, notes. as soon as I, I, I like, she called me right away. Mm-hmm. And so it was like a quick fifteen minute thing, and I talked about how like where the effort came <laughs> from and how we got on the network and everything like that. So that was pretty cool. So big shout out to Heidi Adder. She's a super talented photographer. And she now work, like she's been working for CBC for a bit, so that was really cool being interviewed for that as well. Uh, I'm here, your host G, with Anthony and Vass once again. What's up, guys? Nothing much. I've just been chilling. Chilling. Yeah, nothing much. I've when, been uh, not chilling. When you said <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'll be able to make it, the dick side of me, like the really mean side, I was like, you don't have a job. What are you even doing? Uh, actually, <gasps> oh, hello, pretty hello. hype one. Yeah, very high pressure one too. So, uh, your ex coworker Margaret, my aunt, oh. has been having trouble with marketing online. So now I have a job where she will pay me to use my skills that were wasted on entertain on entertain facts. Not wasted. Well, your training. Yes, my training mm-hmm. after entertain facts was gone. I knew it was gonna come in handy one day, and it ca- I cashed it in. So I will be marketing her or helping her market herself online, getting paid to do it. And yes, I like it. It's an upgrade from working at a pizza shop. So so how long have you been doing that for now? Oh, like literally I had a meeting about it yesterday. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, nice. Anything new with you, Vass? Not much. It's a lot of freaking mosquitoes at work. It's nuts. Dude, they're awful. Awesome. So now. I, I, once you have like three or four on you at a time, they're like, yeah, it's bullshit. Well, what happens is they, they plant that honing device and they're no, like, thanks. hey, guys, guess what? This person. I was also right. in like a ditch, so with work and stuff like that. So that doesn't help either. So it was wasn't it, like was a it regular a, place. It wait, was like, was it a ditch, a hole, or a pit? A ditch. Okay. It's just so humid here. Like it's oh, disgustingly yeah. humid. But it's because well, it's been raining a lot. But raining. they said so in the traps. They use those traps to like dictate how many they're out there. Yeah, yeah. And I think it went from like six to a hundred and eight or something like that. No, no a week. average for this. Uh, for this season is like okay 60 to 70 we're like over 100 of course in those traps which not is like not cool not but yeah cool like, heavy rains they haven't been you know cleaning them dumping the water so they're just breeding like crazy storming so. right now it's yeah, been like, like randomly yeah. raining like hardcore Honestly, for like though, three it's weeks like, i just like going on my porch area and just like when it's just going down hard and just oh yeah, yeah man. I, I enjoy a good storm it's great for everything but construction did i mention the last time that i saw a lightning bolt hit a uh, light lamppost no. Yeah. Oh man. So when we had our uh when we had our dinner mm-hmm. on the way back it was like downpour. Real downpour. Then the lightning started coming and we're talking it's not the lightning that you, it kind of flashes a little mm-hmm. bit. This is the one that looks like someone's drawing it, like mm-hmm. a Bob Ross painting of lightning, which I don't know if he's ever done lightning. As I'm Absolutely. driving one bolt of lightning like Zeus himself threw it down and struck 
a lamppost on the main road and it sparked. Mm-hmm. Not as big as I thought, but it was cool. I've never seen it before. I've only heard one other person said they saw it. So mm-hmm. I was pretty excited about that. I like that was, a good storm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Storms are awesome. The one the other day there was uh, it was completely nice out. Mm-hmm. Nothing was going on. And then all of a sudden a massive crack like three cannons went off at once. And then that was it. And then the sky turned yellow like aviator glasses, like those yellow mm-hmm. blocker mm-hmm. glasses. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. Legit. Le- totally legit. Weather's uh, weird. What is weird? Weather's weird. Weather yeah. is weird. Um, Bipolar. Yeah. How's the Lazy Canadian doing? It has slowed down the loss. I'm working on doing more video content. Like when I set up some actually like doing videos and actually like live like video stuff on there. Mm-hmm. But that takes like it's more time dedicated to actually go and do that and like do it a lot so i've i've slowed it down like the following the drop is like going it's like like at a slow halt because i'm gaining and it's kind of like canceling it out i think i'm like just under 500 right now that's all right yeah that's like kind of where i predicted it would like land at uh people are liking the content they're saying that's good they're like actually it's not just like shit posts they're actually finding it amusing so i guess that's good enough but yeah no it's it's a nice distraction. I like the Spider-Man Chris Hansen one. Oh my god, that one was really good. I like being creative like that, like just going, and just yeah. making stupid shit. Well, I've noticed you've gone more into like an extra caption in the thing. It's not mm-hmm. just like okay, posting this, whatever. Yeah. It's like you throw your own little caption in there, so that's nice, nice touch, very nice touch. But yeah, the 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 chips with the dip thing. First of all, what's really funny about it? I didn't know chips was actually shorthand for championship. Yeah. Had no idea. And so I was talking to Ethan about it because I was watching those Chris D'Elia, like clips and he was doing that one. And I've now I haven't been the biggest fan of Drake in the world, specifically lately. Like I've listened to everything he's put out and it's just it's just not my thing. As, really sad. as the years have gone on, it just hasn't been for me. So and I've always looked at Drake at those Toronto Raptors games like, dude, you're not part of the team. Stop. Mm-hmm. Like Jay-Z doesn't get out there and, and pretend like he's part of the team. And so when they interviewed him after, which of course they will, because it is Drake. He's like, I'm like the biggest star uh, musically and stuff and just in general. But yeah, man, that chips with a dip. I don't understand so, what dip And Chris mean, D'Elia though. like really, well, and he's like, I don't get the dip part. And he was joking about how like he just kept running with it and he didn't know what else to do. And just doubling down. He's like, I want the dip. Chips with the dip. The dip. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> so when you put it up today, I was laughing so hard. So hard. That's the goal. Make one person laugh. Context. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, they yeah. interviewed him. And he's literally saying Kawhi brought the chips. Yeah. So well, I don't want chip. my chips plain. So bring the chips with a dip. Yeah. Give me that dip. So he was. And I'm thinking, I'm like, fucking Dre, man. Or Drake. Like, <laughs> chop, stop trying to come up with a catchphrase. Right. And then I found out after that it was actually short form for championship, at least the, the chip part. And so Ethan was like laughing. He's like, that's even funnier that you had no idea what the chips chips part was. The dip was like, whatever. Mm -hmm. So then him and I came up with this idea of Drake releasing a new double album called Chips and the Dip. And then the first letter of every track, if you line up the double album, it says Chips and the Dip. So he just ends up doubling down on that Chips and the Dip thing. It's just like when Nelly released his, remember his album, he had like two albums, like it was like one different color scheme. So it's like same thing. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like, it's just, he's realized that he's put himself in this weird Mm -hmm. hole on trying to like explain what this Chips and the Dip thing's actually about. Like, he's just trying to be that cool that he's coming up with his own catchphrase. And so he just goes as far as to make an album to make it a thing. <laughs> so that's what, what inspired you to make this album? No oh, spite. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I just need to prove a point. Yeah. Cause I'm Drake. I got put Dressy. in a corner and I just got to get out of here. Yeah. yeah he no was kidding. Advertising. <laughs> um, uh, where do you want, do you want to do your toy story before? Review? Okay. You saw it. Yeah, I did see it. I don't know why the fuck everybody has to make all forms of media so depressing nowadays. Oh, was it But sad? they gotta like these things are attacking me personally. I don't know how they're like seeing my life, but no, it was a depressing movie. Oh, was shit. it good? Yes. Okay. And it's crazy because like it looks like the animation is so clean, like it looks so nice, and it's just mm-hmm. yeah. No, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I enjoyed it. I thought it, like didn't take anything away from the Toy Story franchise. I thought it was a solid follow up. Uh I think they should stop now, though, because yeah, okay. like, don't test your luck. You've mm. made four, like, I think Solid. 98% at least films. I think two was the only weak one. 
Is it? I th- well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I don't again. remember it. It's been years since I've seen it. Two was with uh, Jesse. And Jesse, the yeah. Old man with the pickaxe. See, mm. honestly, yeah. Two for me was probably the weakest. Three was awesome. No, three was. Oh, so man. like one and three, it, it's the like same thing. There's no bad one, but you rank the, your favorites. Mm-hmm. So and two falls very low bottom. Would so you put f- four top two? No, I, don't, I have to like rewatch the old ones. I know three yeah. is number one for me. Oh, okay. That was like as a kid. I not the like, OG. Holding back tears. Mm. I'm like, don't cry in this theater, Anthony. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> but no. Sometimes you just got to let it go. Yeah. You just have to. Like, I'm, I'm a big proponent. At, at of least a single tear. Yeah. One. But yeah, no, there's this one scene. I don't know why. It was a random scene. And it got me like bad in this movie, too. But yeah, it was a great movie. I thought it was really enjoyable. Mm. Uh, I don't think they really set them up. Like they could do a sequel, but like it's best if they don't. Like they Just leave it be. Yeah, it, like it, like conclude. It was like a Dark Knight Rises kind of ending, mm. where it's like they could go, but it's like you don't, you shouldn't. Yeah. But no, I thought it was like yeah. If you haven't seen it, it's a solid one. I got I saw it went on Tuesday, so it was like six seventy five, which that is how you need to see movies because that's like half price for the ticket. Yeah, that yeah. Is, and I just like yeah. bring my water bottle and just buy skills beforehand, so I'm not like dropping fifty bucks each time. Oh man, right. you put like a Ziploc bag in there with candies and stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, and this, I need my water though. Yeah, whatever. You can fill up at a. There's a fountain. Yeah, there is a fountain. <clears throat> but, you know, um, have you seen Spider-Man yet? Not yet. I haven't seen any movie. I still haven't seen a movie since <sighs> Avengers Endgame. Did you like it? I did. You know what? I did. There's. Did you go by yourself? No, you. No, no, I went with people. <laughs> we went on the we, same night. He went to his. Th- it's, His thing. It's okay. He's buffering. There it is. Which Toy Story? Yeah, when you were at Toy Story, I was there Were too. you with Thanos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I saw them beforehand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like ahead of yeah. people. That's why you probably didn't see me. But yeah, no, I went and saw it. I liked it. Uh, it was really, really cool. And yeah, they, they some things are like, okay, I expect this would turn the way it did. But the very, very end scene mm. kind of really like, I was like, what the heck? It really, really threw me off. And I'm like, I didn't really care for the end. The mid the mid was what I cared. The mid for. was amazing. I think that I was... might have been spoiled because someone had made a thumbnail oh, and it had two characters on or one character on there. Yeah, that uh, may or may not be true. Okay, but if it is true, I'm super excited to see how it plays out. Go and watch if it. it's not true, then whatever. I do. I I need to see John Wick three. I need to see for John Wick three. When did it come out? May. Like mid-May? Yeah, me. Yeah. So, you know, that's... Just, just that... Uh, should just be getting before leaked. Lion and, King. Hey, like, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to before, hold up on that bet, by the way. Yeah. Just before Aladdin. Yeah. So, it was like John Wick, then Aladdin. So, I should be getting leaked in HD quality soon, huh? Jeez. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Which, I apologize for everybody listening. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. I never even said that. Um... Yeah, Shout out right to everybody anyway. from wherever you're listening from. I, I've really been slacking the last couple of times because I'm like, shit, I forgot to acknowledge. But you know, anybody it's, it's who's implied. Listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Lion, Lion King. King next week. Lion King's next week. You said there's a 58% on Rotten Tomatoes and it's just critic score. Yeah, it is. So I was like listening to Z99 on the radio before coming here like yeah. as it pulled up. Yeah, Lion King ratings are in. Yeah, it's doing really good. Everybody says like really great things about the movie. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like. I haven't looked into reviews. I don't care about reviews. It's just like, from what I saw, though, and what I heard from a guy, comics legend, mm-hmm. he sees all these fucking movies, like, weeks early. I don't know how he does it. Well, he might have a pull with the theater. Well, he just, like, in the States, where I think he lives in New York, he, like, yeah. signs up for these, like, free showings. These Smart. Early, like, he see, saw Spider-Man early. Probably just very, like, mobile. You can go I've to these that. things at any time. I've that done kind of that thing. once. That's a tough thing, right? It's, yeah. like, just drop of a hat cam going mm-hmm. kind of But thing. they'll do that. Like, I remember when my buddy was working at the theater, um... We he would they would all like the whole staff would watch the movies you know a lot earlier than they would because they would have them and they could do that kind of stuff. But they also some movies had special screenings that are like a week before. That was Shazam. Yeah, that was the one I remember. That was one you remembered. Yeah, Um, yeah. I need to see a lot of them. I don't know why people would hate on it. I guess. I mean, it's a really a it's the critics. I really don't care. So from what I heard, I don't really care for Rotten Tomatoes in general. What I heard from this guy who saw it, he said. The reason he, like, could understand why people disliked it was, A, it wasn't as charming as, like, the animated one with the voices. Like, it doesn't really match. Yeah. And, B, the songs didn't sync well with the, like, lips. Okay. Oh. That's really weird because Jungle Book was outstanding. Well, that was the only one that was really critically acclaimed, I heard. Like, Aladdin didn't do yeah. very well critically, but, like, did mm-hmm. really well in the box office. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I yeah, assume it's well. the same thing because it doesn't fucking matter. It's, yeah. Kids yeah. are going to go to See, this one's anyway. a little more difficult because you're dealing with, like, animals. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to make it work, but that's what I'm saying with Jungle Book, though. Jungle Book was so good, yeah. And I, John Favreau, I, I feel properties. that's like an editing thing that could easily be fixed. Yeah, I can't, true. I can't imagine they can't fix that in post production. If it's a thing, yeah, they can definitely fix it for the DVD. This, if it's for the movie, if the movie like there's just a slight off, yeah, I might, you might, some people might catch, some might not, but. 
that used for the to, most part, I imagine it should be fine. That used to be the bane of my existence when we were doing YouTube review. When I was doing the YouTube reviews and setting them up, because mm-hmm. sometimes I wouldn't line it perfectly and it would oh, be just yeah, yeah. off. <gasps> I would get so mad, so mad. Um, mm-hmm. I got some couple other reviews. Non spoiler. Dark season two, outstanding. And I'm pretty sure you have to watch it to actually understand what I'm saying. There's a there's an Assassin's Creed spinoff somewhere in there. Oh, wow. There was something that happened towards the end. I was just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. What era and is Dark set in, though? It, it's set in, like, now, kind of. It's, mm. it, it's, it's an outstanding show. Okay. Season, like, seasons one, season one was really good, and then season two was also very good. Um, both, res- like, very, very different, but almost also the same. But, uh, yeah, Dark season two was awesome. So, both season one and season two are very, very good. So, cool, I would cool. highly, highly recommend that show. And then Stranger Things 3. Mm, oh, boy. You want to talk about, like, this is almost like the Daredevil effect, mm-hmm. where season one was very good, because I love Stranger Things season yeah. one. I love Daredevil season one. Season two had some issues. I mm-hmm. had issues with both Stranger Things season two and Daredevil season two. I liked in general, but I can definitely see where the issues are, and it just felt like two different seasons going yeah. on. But man, three. season three of Stranger Brought Things, it home. oh, un unreal, so good. Yeah. It's a very violent show. It's oh, big, it's gotten more like, violent. There was one scene where some guy was just punching someone in the back, and it was just crack, crack. I'm like, oh my god! Like you this is like rem- Mortal Kombat fucking sound effects. It kind of reminded me of Karate Kid <laughs> yeah. with uh, Jaden Smith, oh. where like yeah. the kicks, like the kid getting kicked in the face, was like the sound effect on that. Like these kids were getting. It beat. sounded like down oh, it was i was cringing wow. oh my god that is awful i had a few of those moments too with those right? creatures or humans? Well, humans with everything humans oh, and okay. creatures and like the amount of beatings that some of these kids take like oh. these kids yeah uh, but everybody was so good um they did some they really understood what relationships were like mm-hmm. and the only weird thing was like i was me and like the people that i was around mm-hmm. or the people that i grew up with didn't act that mature at that age so they definitely added some real real wisdom to these kids Mm -hmm. but it just made it that much better i guess if you survive like what two previous alien attacks yeah Yeah. but it was so natural it wasn't overdone it wasn't and then there was there's one thing again this is non-spoiler there's one thing that's added in so for the time period it would be something like whoa like if this came out in the 80s -hmm. um it would be like a holy shit moment kind of thing right but they handled it so eloquently and they handled it so just respectfully and they didn't draw too much attention to it, but it was there and you're just like, oh, cool. Like, I don't know. It was it was just so well done. And in an a era now where most of the content that we're seeing just beats you over the head with everything that they can. Like, if, if there's a virtue signaling thing that they can do, they wield that hammer and they slay everything. And it's super annoying because it's like, we get it. Boom. No, we get it. Boom, 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 boom. No, we get it. Damn it. So they didn't do that in this, and I thought it was very Did well done. Did you see the post credit scene? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Does it, do you like have to watch, or does it like give you the option just to go to it at the end of the episode? I, I just like... Okay, okay. Yeah, Fast forward, you know? Um, New technology. I, know. I was wondering if you're like... <laughs> would it be like an option to skip to it, or you to like actually watch it? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. usually they have to, you have to cancel that countdown, because yeah. it'll start something new, and you're like, no. Someone, I, I, there was a, I didn't even read the article. I just saw the tagline. And I thought it was such a shitty tagline where it said, uh, uh, Stranger Things 3 didn't do Harper, like didn't do good by Harper, like the way that they had his character. I'm like, I'm sorry. They did great by him. Mm-hmm. I thought he was, a, I thought he was really good in this. Just in general, he was good overall, like all the characters. And then I kept thinking, in a lot of those scenes, especially with L, in reality, this little girl's holding her hand up to nothing, mm-hmm. screaming at nothing, and everyone's screaming at like this blank wall. All the acting was unbelievable. Yeah, like that's such a hard thing to pull off. We've talked about it before with actors and actresses that have to perform with like a tennis ball or something, mm-hmm. yeah. or you know, um, in Jungle Book, where you have this little boy having to act with these tennis balls, and yeah. like he's not acting with real things most of the time, and mm-hmm. he was outstanding, and this was outstanding too. So Did you hear the controversy as to having too many characters smoke in Stranger Things. It, 
it was the 80s. Yeah. That's what I don't care, but that's what everybody's saying. It's an era 80s. appropriate yeah. and accurate. Get and over the, it. Yeah. But they, they folded. They said they're not going to cut down the smoking in season oh, four. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Like, but I'm sorry. If you, see, it, 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 see, it's not the problem that the people complain. It's the people that listen and actually change. Just oh, kind yeah. Of so shit. I'm yeah. like, no, just tell them no. If you're stupid enough to watch like Stranger Things and that's what pushes you over the edge to start smoking, they don't like glorify it. They don't like, you know, you don't see Hopper like just talking about it. They're like, oh, I'm going to grab this cigarette. <sighs> Holy fuck. That is the most amazing thing I've ever had in my life. He just yeah. does it naturally. Turns to like, the camera. Marlboro cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, man, for your cigarette game, like, needs. GTA as well. Like, oh, that that was violence. It's just like anything. Yeah, but like, you know what? Just don't just get over GTA it. GTA is different because you know if you're not mature enough to play GTA, yeah. then fuck off. Okay. It's not for 13 year olds. I'm just looking. At it from I the, was a mature thirteen yeah, year old. Like, I just think it's really. Um, I, I agree with you one hundred percent. With everybody complaining, it's, let them let them it's, complain. It's the creators it's shouldn't threat. do anything. Like no, they, they really shouldn't. Yeah. Stick to your stick to your thing. If you want to be era appropriate or mm-hmm. accurate, be era accurate. That's what you need to do. That's the most for me. That's what's important. Because if you're not, then it's just like just you lose a little bit of it. Mm-hmm. Um. Yes. So we got through some of our reviews. Um. But yeah. Yeah. Stranger Things season three, so good. And like, I said, it's a comeback because I heard two was, two was like fell way down. Dude, but, uh, I there was a lot of things in two. I haven't even started it. Like, Steve and Dustin's relationship saved season two for me. That's why the best thing about season three so far too. Like and, the, and, well, the that st- is amazing. Scoops Ahoy is what they're called. Uh, yeah, is Steve Scoops Ahoy. Dustin, Dustin, I love that. Two older guys, or are they some of the Dustin's young kids? the younger kid. With Which the curly one? hair, with the no teeth. Oh yeah, no teeth. And then Steve is the older guy that was beating the crap out of Mike or out of uh, Will's brother. Oh, okay, like he yeah, was the yeah. dick that was dating Nancy and yeah. stuff. And well, who's cool. like now like an amazing character? Oh, okay, cool, nice character. He's a Jamie Lannister of Stranger Things. Ah, nice. You know what? That's not a bad way. Except he wasn't banging his sister. I don't well, even think he has. A we sister. don't know. <laughs> but even, but even uh, was her was her name Max and her brother Billy? Yeah, Max and Billy. So they made Max in the second season be this like video game god. And they gamer girl, gamer girl, and they did nothing with it after. And then Billy was just this dick, and they did nothing with him. But it's almost like they used all of season two to throw these guys in here for nothing. Mm -hmm. And then in season three, you get your payoff. But it took away a lot of things from season two, in my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, they did they did really good. Max was great. Lucas's sister was a little bit annoying. I just really don't care for them, honestly. Like they just their storyline did nothing. Lucas so was far. legit ninja with that slingshot. Oh yes, I know. Lucas is the most rational person in that whole thing. He's dealing with his own stuff. It's mm-hmm. it's really cool. And I think there was a thing with Will as well that I don't know. I have. I to like look no. More Will into it. I think had the best like so far like the best like character development and like just how he like reached that breaking point like, when he like bitched them all out. But. Oh yeah, that was great. So yeah, highly recommend those ones. Um, I guess since we're talking about Netflix, we can get into HBO Max. And they're starting mm-hmm. by taking Friends, and they're going to start taking what Fresh Prince of Bel Air and some other stuff. Fresh is going out, I think so. And that's not going to HBO. And that yeah, HBO oh, Max is like Wait, stealing, good. taking things away from. So Netflix. For, I have a question because for a lot of these things, yeah, uh, these programs don't come to Canada, mm-hmm. so they leave it on Netflix. Right. So I know uh, the Office is coming off Netflix next year too. Yeah, but it's like for Fox, like an app. So if that doesn't come to Canada, will it stay on Netflix Canada? That's interesting. I don't know. Because How I Met Your Mother, I think it has the same thing happened there for the States where I went to Hulu, but yeah. it's on yeah. Canada. I guess all this Netflix news, is it mainly geared towards the U.S. market or is it also My for guess us? is, well, to his point, I believe that's what you're going through. Mm-hmm. Like that's what he's alluding to. And, I, and I'm and i actually starting to like, I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're so, right. Yeah. Because that's Make fun of Canada all you fucking want. Guess what? We're going to have the office. On Netflix. <laughs> That'd be amazing if we do. Like the day after, nobody has the office. Until, you know what? Until every other, like, I don't know other, like, I know I deal with, I use Crave. Mm, I but heard Net- Crave's really good. Crave's good, but I don't like their interface and how they operate and stuff. It's getting it got better. Do they have a skip and update? throw option too? Or uh, no, it just starts building up. Like <sighs> your, your your list starts growing for each single episode, so you can't just click on the whole thing and then find the episodes mm-hmm. you want easily. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to get there, and then your your whole list thing fills up with all every single episode. Oh, and stuff it's like not that. just like the next episode. Yeah, oh, that would be fucking so annoying. It, it just fills up a lot. It's yeah. very clunky. It's very busy, and it's just like no. So until the I don't know how the rest of these streaming services are, but with the with the Crave one, it's good. They're getting a lot more stuff, uh, but until they fetch the interface to be like Netflix, which is why a lot of people would probably stick around with Netflix no matter what, because it's the, it's the best well, people are lazy. operating. 100%. It's built for that. It's mm-hmm. just, 
honestly, it's kind of like the iPhone of the phone yeah, world. No, that's very true. Of the of the of the mm. streaming world, it's very easy to use. It's search done. There also, like Netflix original shows, like the ones that pick up the most steam. Like I don't hear about Crave originals. I don't hear about Amazon originals. Like some of the Amazon ones. Am- I, like, I know Prime, good. Prime has a lot of originals actually that are have a lot of good steam. They take their time. They're not. I know as, like, like Jack Ryan's the one I've heard about, and yeah. then the yeah. Man on the High Castle or some Man shit. High Castle is really. But like those are the only two ones yeah. I can match you name. Uh, Netflix will. I, HBO. I think the thing with Netflix will be when they're like they have really good originals. Mm. Not all of them are great. Yeah. Um, it's going to be really interesting though because if these big shows leave Netflix, then it's going to be a case of well, who's going to stick around and who's going to go through Netflix when they're going to be like, well, I want to take my show to HBO Max. Yeah. You know, if a bunch of people jump ship, mm-hmm. you know what's going to happen though. Yeah. No, no this is what's going to happen. Everyone's canceling their cable, mm-hmm. yep. which I, I get did. it, right? Mm-hmm. Once the sports and people usually have cable just for sports. Once they start doing that, and HGTV, and HGTV, sure. Once they start doing that with other stuff, eventually, what's going to happen in about, I would say, three years, someone's going to be like, "Hey, I have this wonderful service that combines all of your accounts under one banner for twenty one ninety nine, and boom, you have cable again." <laughs> It's essentially just going to no. consolidate everything under one banner. Someone's going to do it. Different channels with each streaming service you have because all of them have different things to get, which is stupid because it totally eliminates the whole idea of streaming. But that's what I'm saying. It's all going to mm-hmm. revert back to what it is, and then it's going to break out again. It's history, man. Everyone's going to have to go back into history because it does, in fact, repeat itself. But I'm fine. I got just flex. Like, just like uh, satellite. That's what satellite is, is a bunch of different services under one banner yeah. and like whichever service you have. So one of the companies will take it and be like, hey, let's add this stuff. We'll put a package with these eight together and then you pay your 50 bucks a month and then you've got everything there. Mm-hmm. And it'll essentially run almost like a cable slash satellite or whatever. And then once sports flips over, dude, I bet you the best thing for like an ESPN or a sport thing to do is have a Netflix for sports. Yeah. For sports shows mm-hmm. or whatever. I'm surprised they haven't already. Me awesome. neither. So, One yeah. more thing I want to add, though. I feel like the only streaming service that actually has potential to like be a decent rival to Netflix is Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Yes. And it's it remains to be so seen many. what kind of interface they have. And that's ultimately how I'm going to look at it, too. Yes, the content will be great. But if it it's clunky and annoying to work with, then no. Yeah. Amazon Prime is the same way, actually, with episodes and seasons. Seasons are separated. They're their own little oh, like, icon kind okay. of thing, right? So you can see like one season and icon, then you have to find the next season and go like that. But mm. it's very clunky that way. Clunky. Uh, Cuphead's getting a Netflix show. Yeah, that's interesting. Which I think is really cool. It's a, a very, very difficult video game. We almost had an interview, but... Uh, yeah, those people are from here. Yeah. But Bo, man. Yeah, we got... Uh, w- that would have been awesome to get a ground floor interview. To be fair, though, they were very busy back in that time. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but then... Now that you mentioned Disney Plus, I'm trying to segue properly. The John Wick writers are joining Falcon and the Winter Soldier Marvel show, which I yeah. imagine is just going to be Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Now that Falcon is Captain America, mm-hmm. yeah, but they're probably not going to change. I feel like they are Turo. So they're probably, probably they're not going to change the name by now. They're going to keep Falcon. Well, and- I, well, why would they call him if he's going to be? You called- could change the name anything you want, right? Yeah, in but- the comics, is he still called Falcon? I think he's when called he Captain America. Yeah. Like the new I Captain swear America. to God, if they call him Falcon, they're gonna say that's racist because you know Captain America. That's what he is now. I don't know. It doesn't make oh, sense. I can that, see that happening. It doesn't make yeah. sense. I'm just saying it doesn't have to make sense. I'm gonna bitch about it either way. Yeah, so that's yeah. true. No, I think uh, I, I would I would change it to Captain America and the Winter Soldier because I think a it's a great title. Yeah. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with Falcon, but I think Captain America and the Winter Soldier is really cool. Unless there's a new Falcon, maybe. Hawkeye. No, no, he's pretty much a new Falcon. No, Hawkeye, Hawkeye's kind of like weeding himself I, out. I think right? he has a TV show that he's like leaving. Or it's Black Widow. But the thing is, out. the show's not even out yet, right? Yeah. Uh, what are you guys up to? I'm at work right now. Nice. Tuning in at work. What do you do for work, Arturo? Yeah, Arturo, what do you do I'm for curious. work? Um, Yeah, so the John Wick writers are in there, so I'm nice. super on board. So how I, violent will it be? I don't know if it's a violent thing, but I think it's just going to be like... It's Disney Plus. I just hope it's funny. Well, think, I don't think I think they'd have a wide range. Yeah, but MCU stuff is never violent. Well, not that violent. So I think to say it, that they'll the show is, blood and stuff like that it won't happen. That's It'll not be in like the, the writing, though. That's in the direction. 
True. So I'm thinking in the writing, yeah. what they'll do is they'll incorporate. Yeah, I think they'll go with more of a gritty tone. Um, yeah. The writing also sets up your your environments, right? So I think yeah. environments and placement of characters is going to be a very big thing. They're yeah. obviously going to work with everybody else, right? I wonder how it'll compare to like all the past Russo brothers because they were the ones that were really in charge of those characters yeah. for the past how many films, and now someone else is taking over. So I wonder if it'll. I don't think it should be a problem because I feel like the Russos did it. Yeah, and they understood those. Char- it seems like they understood those characters better than anybody. So who's directing this one though? I don't remember. Is this gonna be like different people each episode or? No, I think no. it's gonna be. Oh, actually, no. I, I would imagine that they're gonna have one person do the whole thing. I would hope that'd so. be the smartest thing to do because they shoot them all at once. Because the thing is, this has to coincide a hundred percent with the MCU. Like anything and everything coming right. out now on on this deem- uh, streaming service, MCU related, like Loki. Mm-hmm. Scarlet and Vision, mm-hmm. however that's going to play out, I don't know, huh. but that's could fair. be like a dating game, I don't know, <laughs> or dating show, <laughs> reality. <laughs> it's literally it's like, like the, the Jessica real Simpson, world. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah, the Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey thing oh, with Vision God. and Scarlet Witch. That would be so funny. What's oh. our Arturo saying? So Arturo works at a shoe store. He's stalking right now. Sweetja's also here, and Sweetja is... I don't know, like, he's just a friend from school, oh. and he, like, raps, and he's actually crazy good. He's not, like, a shitty rapper. Is he the one that you sent me his, uh, No, that's link? some oh. guy from Australia, but this guy, Sweejit, they want me to come on a rap, and I suck ass, but you know what? I'm gonna try and get good for this. <laughs> did I ever tell you that I rapped when I was living in Calgary? No. I, I did. did. I went to a show. Oh, I you did. actually rapped in, like, yeah. public. Yeah. Which yeah. show did you come to? Uh, the one at Scratch. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah Scratch. Was no, bro- that- or Broken City. The, you were at the Broken City yeah. one. Oh yeah. Absolutely. What did you do? Rap battle or scratch? just rap? no, no, no? It was actually rap. It wasn't scratch. There was a there was a theater. So the biggest one we did to was in front of 150 people, and nobody booed. And not only that, my friends were like, like when I thanked them for coming, they're like, thank you for not for not making us lie tonight because huh. they thought they were gonna come in like, because we were opening up for two other people that were much much better than us. Yeah. But we just had like the fun, catchy little like more. Less uh, intense raps, like, mm. but yeah, no, it was fun. It was so me, what was your me rap and my name? boy Rack. Uh, it's the stupidest thing. G Vanny. It was terrible. It's terrible. Um, mm. but we had uh, we did a Golden Eye one, so we used the music from mm. um, what's that Hello one seven? episode? Or not one episode? That one mission, the second one in the bath when you start off in the bathroom. Oh yeah, I'm gonna forget. Dum, dum, dum. Oh, yeah. Anyways, we did that one, and it's called Secret Agent Man. It has a great. Did hook. you record it? Or? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. I've got all six tracks that I did. Next week, we have to have that for an intro. No, <laughs> no, no one's gonna listen to them. Aren't you proud? They said it was good. No, I thought they were good, oh. but they, in in relation to regular rap music, they're not that oh. good. My buddy now, my old roommate, he's doing his own stuff, miles away better than what we used to do back then. So yeah, Dino Arcade. That's what he was called. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. So that was that. The Mortal Kombat movie. Oh yeah. Is supposedly a hard R. Well, thank as told God. by Todd Garner, who is the producer, and he said it's going to be very close to the game. They also have Joe Taslim in as who's Sub Zero. He was also in like a Fast and the Furious movie, but he was all more importantly he was in the Raid. Uh, he's gonna play Sub Zero. Oh, nice. So this uh, already you've got an incredible martial artist. We kind of need to. This I like never ever followed an, the overarching story of Mortal Kombat. Is it an overarching I, story, or does it change each game? Uh, I I think there's a bigger one. Like it's like I think there's like there's always a story, whether it's within just the game or whether it, it transfers to every single game. Like because we're on eleven right now, mm-hmm. eleven games have come out. Oh, yeah. So think if they have a story that's stretched out that far, pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. I've never cared for it. I never like went far. I just always like the fighting button mash and stuff. And I wasn't very good at them. I just like to play around, or whatever. Yeah, I was never as good as some other people. Like even when I was to playing in just combos, one hundred percent, and that kind of stuff. I would watch videos of some of these guys. They're stupid good. And like the second they have, like it's literally a, a game of who gets the first hit, mm-hmm. especially between two really good players. Yeah. The second one person gets that first hit, it's game over. The person no, they will punish your ass air. Oh, for man. any mistake you oh, make. Yeah. They will it just beat you. Unreal watching. Like I don't understand it. I like, don't. The thing I dislike about like Mortal Kombat and Injustice is just because it's like kind of plays slowly, where it's just like kind of back and forth slowly. Yeah. Like I play Dragon Ball Fighters. That's the only fighting I, fighting game I play. Mm-hmm. But if you fuck up, you just get bitched, and it's so fast, and it's yeah. just like the most frustrating thing. 
but I love playing Dragon Ball music in the background. Yeah. And if I'm just beating someone's ass, like I'll be screaming as loud as I can like I'm in the anime, and it's the most fun thing. Wow. My mom thought I was getting like destroyed downstairs she thought like something was happening she came down all worried I'm like don't worry just beat someone's ass <laughs> yeah when uh i bar- i still have injustice you can That's take fine, it back no. by the way i only barred it from you for the ninja turtles update so then i'd play the ninja rap on repeat while playing it <laughs> it's pretty awesome i still have a video of when i did that yeah. um yeah. anyway so yeah this mortal Kombat movie is uh looking like they're they're kind of you know they're they're they know what they're going for and it seems like they're understanding it so far because it is a hard R game, mm-hmm. so you should have a hard R movie. Um, because, oh, man, I'm, I'm waiting for them to actually introduce the X-ray fatalities hmm. or the X-ray moves. Because in the new Mortal Kombat games, like if you do a fatality or move, mm-hmm. oh yeah, it shows. Yeah. 100%. Like if you're noob smoke or something, you can go through the person's body and like grab their spine and it'll show it. And, oh man, it's gonna be nuts. so. Arturo is hyped for Joe. Is that what his name is? For Joe to see. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's he's so good. And if you've never seen the Raid movies, those are just unbelievable. Yeah. Do you have anything about Uncharted? Like, do you have the news about that one? Or? No. What news came up? So, Tom Holland is officially going to be... It's going to be a young Nathan Drake only. Mm-hmm. And this story is not going to be based... Well, it's going to be like... It's not following any of the storylines from the game. So, it's going to be a new story and all that crap. Okay. Which I don't think is a bad thing. Because honestly, like... I feel like if you just make an Uncharted movie, it's kind of like a, it's going to be an Indiana Jones, so it doesn't actually matter. Right. Basically. And Tom Holland's good enough, I feel like, where he could do it, and he does have that like Nathan Drake young vibe to him in yeah. Spider-Man you see. It, so. Well, based on uh, the third game, when they did mm-hmm. the flashbacks yeah. with him, he it, it, there's a very good close resemblance there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm excited. I, I still... I never actually played the first Uncharted games fully. I always watch my uncle or Michael play it. Yeah. yeah. But I played the fourth one and I loved it. And I don't know. I just want to... I think it's remastered on PlayStation, isn't it? I haven't played any of them, actually. Oh, oh man. I think you'd really like them. No, it's just fun. Like, the train mission. I, I played that so much. It's just so, like yeah. the second one. That's the second so one. So nice. They're all... They just... They they really brought that cinematic vibe that you're actually playing a movie yeah. through there. Like yeah. Metal Gear introduced the idea of cinematic cutscenes. Yeah. At least most people say this could be disputed by any gamer who has had some deep cut game or whatever, but mm-hmm. really brought it to the forefront. Front. So f- since then, the first Metal Gear game, like the cutscenes were very prominent. And then you got games like Uncharted, which are literally like, it's it's really just a movie. Yeah. And you're just playing the cool sequences. And the first game obviously didn't do things as great as the next ones, but to go from the one game and then game of the year on the second one, yeah. come on. Come on. And I would imagine that, I imagine that that, not imagine. I know that was also another big game changer in yeah. games. One thing I want to add to that, like video games are like movies. I really hope because Netflix did this with Minecraft and they added the Telltale game Minecraft to Netflix mm-hmm. and you got to play it, the game but with the choices and just watch it. Oh, okay. If they add the Walking Dead series, that would mm-hmm. be a game changer. Like, I would go back because have you ever like seen them or like watch them? Mm-hmm. Like they're such good games. Like Very crazy good. good. Like I don't know where the TV show fucked up, but you know. Uh, but that'd be, I think that would be Netflix is next step just because that you know got to be different somehow yeah also the walking dead ends this month the comic book series oh really yeah, no. how long is the show going is that done now the show's still going <laughs> yeah <laughs> but both, the, both shows are still <coughs> uh there's gonna be three shows coming out soon well, of there's course another spinoff only female they have to specify that okay Okay, okay, okay. I already cool, know cool, there's cool, going to be cool, a lot cool, of like cool, cool, unpleasant cool, scenes cool, in that. Cool, cool, it was so cool. funny because I watched that Family Guy episode. Remember when uh, Stewie thought that Brian and uh, Peter's relationship was like purely a circumstantial, like they wouldn't be friends in other circumstances. Mm-hmm. Like they got in that, he set up yeah. that accident and like the whole scenario. And then he's like, I did the same thing with the women. They've been in there for three minutes. They haven't bothered to try to find each other's names. They're all beating the <laughs> shit out of each other in the hospital. I'm like, that's what my head goes to, unfortunately. But it's hilarious. What does he say? Why do you guys think The Walking Dead is so dead? Well, I think you're the, our, our Walking Dead. So expert. yeah, I think I'm the only one that's watched it. I think it's dead. I don't. Even, I haven't seen the new season. All I know yeah. is that they milk the ever living shit out of it. Mm-hmm. There's more filler episodes and actual story episodes yeah they focus on boring ass shit yeah and i don't know i just feel like the fan base got tired because they strayed too far from the comic books which is fine you can do that Mm -hmm. except they made stupid ass decisions where they can't follow the comics properly because they killed off major characters like carl grimes i don't care if you haven't fucking seen it because they're like two years old Mm. rick grimes had to leave the show because he was fucking done with it all the major characters are leaving the show because how shitty it is Mm. it's literally game of thrones except they can't make it to make a shitty ending because everyone's (laughs) leaving the show 
<laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, and if you really want, you can always check out our F that on The Walking Dead that you did. I'm sure uh, this point is still the same. It's yeah, still yeah. relevant to the show. <laughs> See, I watched I've never watched a, I never read a single comic, never played the games or whatever the heck. And I, I always liked this uh the whole series, mm. but what killed it for me was the schedule. Mm, like Sundays. I wouldn't know where we are like mid-season final yeah. finale like mid-season finales full season yeah. finales the last thing I saw was the Terminus they got stuck in that mm. little sea can mm-hmm. I haven't seen past that that's so that was the last good season was that in like season 2? no 4 five. or 5 yeah, yeah. So I, that's the thing that's how devoted I was for how long and then I just like I got annoyed by the schedule so that's where I'd wait till it's all done mm-hmm. and then binge yeah, no. and that's it it's nice to binge honestly like watching it binge it's fine. For something you don't have to like wait that, a yeah. week to find out no. what bullshit's going to happen. If there's a shitty episode, no. it doesn't matter because there's a good one after. See, that's the same with Riverdale. Riverdale has a messed up schedule. It pisses me off, but I still like it. Same. All I got to say me, that was their is comment. for Riverdale. There's this one clip. I don't watch it. I only saw the first season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this clip, though. I think they're in prison. And this one guy's talking to Archie and is like, you know what? I dropped out in the fourth grade to help sell drugs with my Nana. And Archie said, like, I just can't imagine the context yeah well that means you don't know the epic highs and lows the triumphs and defeats of high school football what and like, oh, yeah. fucking sick. i remember that, that prison? <laughs> i think so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The, imagine you're trying lord. to hype everyone up i think imagine you're what a drug the hell was that? And someone <laughs> says that to you <laughs> come on that's archie andrews <laughs> you know he's gonna say them like that what are you guys top five tv shows Ooh. gentlemen i don't know i still put thrones up there for myself you would yeah uh, Mine starts Breaking Bad, yeah. Seinfeld is second, uh, third, uh, third would be The Wire now. Oh, wow. The yeah, one. because The Wire has always been on my top three list, but I keep forgetting about Seinfeld. Yeah. Um, and then the last two are really tough. I'm not sure. Spartacus. I do Game of Thrones, Spartacus, not in any order particularly, but yeah, Game of Thrones, Spartacus. Um, you know what? I think How I Met Your Mother. No, I think that's up there. Uh, You're putting it up your, there. The thing that's a tough thing. Like I have more genre. I'd have to break it up in genres. But he's saying in general. So the like, Office is on there. See, and then the Sopranos. I'm not my top as five. Sopranos. I think I put it in my list too. Uh, what else? I'm at four. I think three, four. Yeah. The only the only one I know is that Breaking Bad is my number one. Lost and then, for sure. Yeah, Lost got way too control. Con- I like confusing. it. I still. So he says Prison Break. I've not seen it. So that, I, you know what, man? Breaking Bad. Prison Break was really good the first couple seasons That's once they broke out of, of prison yeah you done. really didn't need the rest they broke out of three prisons by the time i was like okay yeah. come on. Uh, it was just kind of one of the like but that first season is very good house of cards first season of mm. house of cards outstanding the rest of it garbage for story shows i don't think i have like a definitive list i know mm-hmm. daredevil season three is probably one of my favorite seasons i watched like yeah. just in general tv just because it was like such a like oh, good really? well done one it was and very I just, like, good i told i rewatched I it it was so good like, i hated like i didn't hate but i just found it really boring and just like the pickup was amazing yeah, yeah. yeah but just in general the ones i like watching the most are found like most joy watching how much your mother's at the top mm-hmm. entourage i want to rewatch again oh, really soon. Yeah, mm-hmm. awesome. brooklyn 99 so good i would throw the office in there just because i do rewatch it and community I want to be watching it again, but like I remember, I just love like the before it got only sold. F- man, only four seasons are good. I only but, seen but man, the four those, seasons. First, oh, man. those first four seasons are outstanding. I'm not see. I want to watch the last season. Oh my goodness! But I have only seen the first four. Do not. Don't bother. Honestly, will it ruin the legacy? Don't. It's just you're sitting there and you're so <sighs> bored. Like you're just like, what happened? I I couldn't watch it anymore. I'm like, I stopped. I'm like, okay, I'm done. Like yeah. I really couldn't. It was so bad. I I enjoy going back and watching specific episodes when mm-hmm. it comes to. Sorry. No, you can bring it closer to you. Yeah, That's I know. The beauty I of these. There you go. Yeah, oh, look anyways. at that. Hey. Uh, but I really like the going back and watching certain episodes. Like any of the paintball ones were amazing. I think my favorite one was a the Dungeons good, and Dragons. Uh, was it the Goodfellas one? No. There. Was, what was that one episode where he was uh, re- doing? Obviously, one of his movie references. Yeah. But it was the one with the chicken fingers. Was that Goodfellas? <sighs> yes, it remember, was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think it was the Goodfellas. My favorite though, my favorite joke was a Dungeons and Dragons one. Oh, that was an where awesome the guy one. was. I think it was a Fat Nick or something like that. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And Fat it's like, Nick. yeah, you know, he's like Troy Fat or what's his name? The old guy, Pierce, right? Pierce, yeah. Pierce, he's depressed. It's like, oh yeah, it looks like he's been saying that every day to get an extra slice of pie. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he was just Chevy, such a Chevy douche. Chase was like an asshole. Mm-hmm. Dan Harmon hated his guts but he hated everybody else too like he, he was like no, no Chevy Chase. Chase was oh like yeah oh yeah no i've like, not heard anything good about that man yeah nothing nothing good yeah. very funny character though he played him oh, well yeah. for I'll sure give him that absolutely sure. he played and then i liked that when obviously troy nobbin was like oh amazing. yeah no. best duo <laughs> do you guys um have any actor or actress that you just can't stand looking at 
I was thinking about that. Not really. Yeah, I can't. I think I had one when I was younger. Yeah. And I now I just I can't for the life Wait, of me like think. Wait, like, you like just think they look weird or just like no, no, it no, has no, nothing like, to do with their acting ability. No. It just this in general, just like, like I don't know what just, I, just, I want to punch their face. Yeah, I, I've I've seen people like that even in our town. I'm like I've seen them many times and like certain oh, events, and people. I'm like and I'm like no, I don't general, know you yeah. through a hole in the wall, but just looking at you, yeah, I'm completely judging you right now, and I want to punch you in the face. Met I don't know what it is. Ago. In your daily was that? I met a lot of people two weeks ago. I want to punch in the face. I don't know them well. I just want to punch them. Hey, that's fair. <laughs> wow. Yeah, mine's always been Claire Danes. I, I, don't Danes, punch, eh? I don't want to punch her in the face. I just See, can't Claire Danes, I like because she's like Homeland. Listen, she in Homeland, yeah, she yeah. killed it. Soph and I watched it. It was very hard for me. So how, but can, you, how something can you say about, you can't stand her if you enjoy watching her show? There's, you know how many people I'm around that I can't stand? Well, I get that, basis? but I'm just saying for me, it'd be like... It was still a good show. I guess it's the degree of how much you can't stand them. And yeah, it's I like, it's the her. point of like, okay, it's either like if they're in something, I probably won't watch it. Yeah. Like that, that'd be a very extreme case. Or it's just like, you'll always comment, I hate your face. Like, I don't know what it is. The I most, hate your face. I would say in the context of just me, the most cliched answer I could give you is Brie Larson. But yeah. I loved her performance in the room so much. She was so good. And the, the Tremblay kid, but yeah. she's a good actress. I tried looking honestly, like between like female <laughs> and male <laughs> actors. I'm like, I, I can't think of one that I'm like, just like, I just hate you so much. I, I used to why. hate that um, Patrick Wilson guy Patrick. for the longest time. I didn't. I just oh. couldn't, I didn't like his face. He was really good in Fargo, though. I thought that that I liked him good like in Fargo. Oh, okay. Um, and then the other guy, he's a TV actor primarily. He's been in some movies, but I really, really dislike whenever he comes up. Patrick Fischler, this guy. Oh yeah, this guy. No you, you would have seen him. There's, they always make him the sleaziest character, but that's less of like just looking at his face and I dislike yeah. him, and more of like every character that he plays is this sniveling, just worm, like low, just su- just this worm that you just yeah, yeah. He was an avid listener of this podcast until right now. Uh, if he it is, off. sorry, bro. You do a good job at it. Same with Claire Danes. Again, Homeland, real good, real good. Hmm. And as an actress, but just I, I don't know. Gwyneth Paltrow's like that for me too, but I think she's like that you uni- like for everybody. I don't think Ooh, people man. really like her. Who? Um, <laughs> Joe, because she doesn't know who anyone is. Uh, uh, I got that. <laughs> looks into this guy. Um, I sent I sent this one to you guys. It's a two parter. Yeah. One, would you want to be rich? We're talking monetary. No, you're rich in your life and yeah. enriching yeah, the in richness. And then the other one is, if so, how rich? And by how rich, I mean like how much it affects your life and your day to day. Like just, yeah. Honestly, they say like money can't buy you happiness, but it sure fucking helps. <laughs> so ultimately, like, yeah, I be comfortable you know with what like pick a, an amount that you'd love to just like this is what uh, you're pulling in a year per usual like nice like 20 to 30 mil lotto max would be a right pretty nice right now why just, not what no like i'm talking like every year this rolls in not a uh, lot of max like a one time i'm saying like you're just so loaded that you're getting 20 mil coming in a, a year or a month or a that's day extreme. if you're talking to like pure salary and like daily life then yeah like honestly like a six figure paycheck would be kind of nice just in general and you'd still work why not or even like an 80 i could not imagine like not working like even you do, like, you do something but like yeah. a regular nine to five you, your no. life would change in, in the sense that like mm-hmm. your your scope of work and stuff like if we're talking like high like we're talking millions rolling in a, mo- a year millions a month millions like, a month again, is like how rich that's do you like be? you that's do what you rich. want See, the thing is, yeah. like, I, like, my life is great. You know, I drive, like, an Oldsmobile. I like it, though. It's comfortable. It's whatever. It's easy. So, like, everything I have is nice. And everything I have, like, you know, I have a PlayStation, Xbox, Switch. Yeah. Like, I worked for it and bought it myself. Absolutely. Like, I didn't have to, you know, I was going to say, I was going to say suck on someone's tip. But that just sounds weird. So, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah. but, like, I didn't have to, like, you know, rely on all, like, you know, these handouts. Yeah. Which, oh, suckling on the teat of somebody yes. else. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, the thing I, would like dislike the most about my generation is that there's a lot of people that are privileged enough to be rich yeah but they're such asses and they don't know how to work and they don't want to work and they just expect everything to come to them oh, like yeah. they don't have any grit they don't have any like work ethic yeah and when they're older they're gonna be fucked because eventually oh if it you're shows stupid yeah. 
enough to how you're gonna get that money some way or other but you're not gonna know how to fucking use it you're mm-hmm. gonna blow it on all this stupid shit it's statistically shown this is like the richest generation of kids mm-hmm. to be honest like across the board there's probably more rich kids than there ever was well if before. you're to, if you're to consider almost everybody in canada is actually considered the top one percent out of the entire world yeah just just for living in canada yeah. you, I, I believe the statistic is you are the top one percent because yeah. you're so fortunate in comparison to other places that are just like you can't you can't imagine it yeah but that didn't answer my question let me let me let me give you my answer okay go my ideal yeah. when I was younger, let's say, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be to be so rich that everybody knew my name, and that it's I, like a I, kingpin vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like everybody knew who I was. I was so loaded that, like, in the conversation of your Warren Buffetts and your Bill Gates and everything like that. Yeah. But then I realized Warren Buffett and Bill Gates people bug them all the time for stuff. Mm-hmm. So I want to be the richest person in the world, like billions a year, like a mm-hmm. billionaire that no one's ever heard of. Yeah, Tommy Wiseau. That's how. <laughs> yeah, Tommy. no one knows where his money comes from. It's the biggest enigma. Yeah, but I want to be so rich that I don't have to. Like, I, I just the man nobody the knows. Kind of thing. <laughs> and I would, I, I would want to do it to the point where I'm still doing the stuff that I'm doing now, aside from the fact of doing a nine to five. Yeah, and like just doing this podcast primarily, just but nobody knows no. that I'm rich. That's so you how rich be like I Batman, be. which is like a legend, like, oh, what that rich guy? Shut the yeah. fuck up. There's no rich guy who has all this money. And then you just show up out of nowhere, just yep. drop a wad of $100 bills. <laughs> yep. Ah, like, whatever. Yeah. Soph and I will go on trips everywhere and anywhere at any point in time or whatever. Like, you know I'll have I a feel plane that nobody what, knows. Uh, what group does that probably the best if you're talking about like anonymity, but they have crazy wealth is like European people because mm-hmm. there's old money. We're talking like old money ancient money sitting there for like these kids that some have made it themselves some it's like generational passed down others are like business tycoons and that kind of stuff and they're not really on the radar but they exist but they're so loaded exactly and they can just do whatever they want and i feel like europe has that a little bit more in, in, in the states it's like out there it's in your face anyone who's anybody and wants to like you said the your original thing that's what i'm the americans are like yeah like i don't want to be like dad blazarian where i'm like Showing pictures of yeah whatever. of me on there like I was watching Dope season three mm-hmm. and there was literally a, a clip of the guys in L A that were looking at other people's Instagram accounts that were flashing money and they are actually like saying I'll probably follow this guy for a bit and then just jack his money yeah exactly. like th- these guys do that and by the way if you haven't seen Dope at all you should watch it it's on Netflix it's unreal I also learned how much a uh, stock of coca plant is and it's uh just from the, the ground versus what it's like in a paste. But anyways, it's a crazy show. But I just don't, like, I don't live my life out loud anymore. Mm-hmm. This podcast is really the only time I'm actually out there. Mm-hmm. On Instagram, I rarely post about myself anymore. Don't take selfies anymore. Soph and I very like live under the radar. So Which a speak. lot of people need to do. And it's been so, yep. you know how freeing it is? The other day, there's a guy by the name of John Campia. And I've mentioned him on the show before. And he's like, he was one of the guys in Canada that started a blog called The Movie Blog. Like, that's how early he started and someone bought it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And his, this is a mistake I did. I had a notification on my phone and I decided just to click it on the screen. And it was his tweet that said uh, something about the whiners, the, uh, the whiners of The Little Mermaid. Uh, I can't imagine what they're going to be like when they find out that the actress playing Ursula or that whoever is, I think it's... Uh, I think Ursula, isn't it? Ursula's uh, Kennedy. Um, no, no, McCarthy. McCarthy. She's like, that she's not actually purple. And my first re- like reaction was like, you are totally dismissing and reducing what the conversation's actually about to try to be clever. And he does yeah. that a lot. But then I just left it. And there's a lot of things that I've just been leaving lately and just not even looking at specifically the social media stuff Mm -hmm. and i've been so much more content with it and all i need or all i would like i don't actually need it but all i would like is just so much money that it doesn't even matter yeah that's and and i could still be anonymous to everybody i miss stirring the pot on entertain facts though with just stupid people in my comment Mm -hmm. section just like going after them for being dumb Mm. i'll give it time (laughs) but we have a good question from young click which is his name rap name uh, he said, "What would be the first thing you would do with your or with the money if a billion dollars was transferred to transfer to your bank account?" A billion. 
So the unfun answer would say invest. Mm. The fun answer, I got to think about this. What would I do? It's a billion. I'm Best. pretty sure you can have a l- good amount of time with a mill. But still, just debt. If he's talking about first thing, first thing you do, pay off any debt, family debt. Okay, but like all fun. That shit. Let's do fun. Like realistically, yes, but like buy something. You what do you say buy. for fun or realistic? Well, you can just general. do both. Just what? Do both. Okay. What would you yeah. do? Realistic first, first thing, debts. Debts are cleared. Friends and family. Okay. See, I'm the same except not friends and family, because I don't need people looking at me. Like it's a one-time thing. Doesn't matter. I don't want people looking at me like the piggy bank. No, obviously. Family, yes, but how? Like friends. Well, we're I talking like off, close I would group pay of off, friends, close, so close circle. First thing I do is pay off my mortgage, pay off his mortgage because he's my brother, and pay off my parents' mortgage. Mm-hmm. Then you have to pay off my, and, my side of the mortgage and my <laughs> your side, I guess, and <laughs> my mother and father-in-law now because I know my wife will want to do that as well, and then leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Everybody else. Not will not even know except for the day on your daughter's wedding, the day of your daughter's wedding. Right? That's true. That'll be one hell of a wedding. Yeah. Sorry to his son. Sorry, his son just got the Loki one. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work. Oh, the same. that kid will never know we're rich. Yeah, I, I would probably buy a house and and it'll be the exact same thing as my parents have now. Yeah. No, if I was rich, yeah, my kids they are fucking working. <laughs> I'm not giving them handouts. You never answered the question. What would well, be the yeah, first thing know, you man, do? A lot of, uh, maybe a car. Honestly. I don't have car. debt, right? So, like, I think a car, just, you know, upgrade. Yeah. Like, nothing like, I'm not going to buy, like, a Lamborghini just mm-hmm. because there's no fucking point. But, like, just not, like a, not in this town. Just one that doesn't leak It'd oil. Be destroyed by puddles. Just one that doesn't leak oil, you know? <laughs> Take care of the fam first, too. Yeah. Like, I've lived with, I've lived with constant debt. Not even debt. I've just lived with constantly having to owe and being on the brink for, like, nine, ten years now. Yeah. It's getting real tiring. Now I'm at this point where it's like, where your head's above water and just bobbing there. And yeah. it's been like that for almost a year. And so it feels good. So yeah. if that ever happened, I'd just take care of that feeling altogether. I lie. I don't know why that triggered this, but I would buy like a garage gym or like a gym I could just put in like my backyard, like just my own one. Yep. has everything I need and I could just work out in peace without any idiots out there because there's so many of them in the gym and they annoy the ever living shit out of me. That would be the first thing I would do. Second thing I'd do is i take my rental property. I'd kick my tenants out because I wouldn't need them anymore because I'd have it paid off and then turn it into a full-blown studio. Hmm. Like I would turn it into a two-tier studio Yeah, where you can record. You've got a YouTube area. Like I, uh, yeah, You could have a three-tier basement too. I have the basement too. Yeah, it would be a full three-tier yeah. property that's specifically for like yeah. this kind of stuff. If we're talking a fun thing, yeah, it'd be a trip straight to Vegas. You do Private Vegas? Jet. If we're talking a billion dollars, yeah. a pri- I'd charter a private jet or even first class seats straight to Vegas with a cl- group of close friends and family and have a good one. Sweet, what you got? What do you want to do? Let us know in the comments. Yes. And whoever else is listening yeah, um, or he's, watching. He's, he's or if you're listening, you can always email us at the effort podcast at gmail.com or like you could send us a message on Instagram at the lazy Canadian or at the effort podcast and just be like, hey, this is what I would do. Um, Last question, kind of. Sure. Actually, second last question. Oh. Do you guys ever get nervous when a cop double backs and starts following you? I mean, it's obviously, that's happened. like a... I typically assume they're after me because I'm usually speeding and it's usually in the highway. Yeah. That happened the other day. Like, this cop was going to turn right. I passed by him on the speed limit. Mm-hmm. And then he ended up turning and following me the whole way. And the entire time, I'm thinking, I'm like, just running what your plate. did I do wrong? Like, from the start to the mm. beginning, I'm like... He's bored. He just felt like running your plate. No, no he ended up going somewhere else. It just yeah. really threw me off. That wasn't a real legit... I just had written it down because I was thinking about it. And it was much <laughs> funnier at the time that I wrote about it. This one's going to be a fun one. What was the wrestling one? This is it. Oh, I got a good one. Okay. So, it was originally a professional fighting question, but no. We're going to go wrestling because I also want to two-part this. I think I forgot that question. Anyway, What's your intro wrestling song? Mm. And... What would be your signature move? I have this. But before, so we just said he would go to all the exotic places. Oh, that's a good one. So this relates back to the Trifon's Pizza days. This was Tino's idea. But the it wrestling was a, thing? Yes. Oh. But it was very funny. So if your father gets mad, I'm just a messenger. All right. Oh, here we go. So the character would be a pope or someone very religious. And you know how the Undertaker comes out to like a dong and the lights go off? That's so good. So it would be church bells instead, and it would light up the whole arena white, and he'd show up in the middle of the ring. Oh, that'd be good. Uh, so as you appear in the middle of the ring, your signature move would be called something like the holy shit. 
You know, they're <laughs> super elaborate. And you'd go and you just kind of like punch them in the head, shoulder, shoulder, then gut. Go on the top rope, do the like cross, and then do a pull back flip and just land on them. That's a good one. It's almost wow. like the Christ air from Tony Hawk. Yeah, I remember that. I like that one. Uh, Vass, what would be your entrance song and what would be your signature move? <sighs> entrance Take song. your time. I can't think of a specific song, but honestly, I'd pick something like very offbeat, like a opera song or something like that. Something from like, yeah, something really like low key. Like, uh, oh, what's but the Botticelli song? Time to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. That'd that be, could be really dark if you. Oh, we have only fifteen seconds left on the live. So whoever's on the live, uh, thanks so much for joining you. us. It's only two people. Signature okay. move. Yeah, like you, have to, you have to have a name. So I have a persona and everything. I don't know. Well, not necessarily a persona. I mean, if you have a persona, then then it might it might help you. But you can even use yeah, you know, like, signature like move. Your signature move could be like the goodbye. It's mm. literally called the goodbye, oh, and yeah. it's this move that you do that just wrecks the other person. But you yeah. can only do it once, right? It's like the one off in Iron Man two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Not very creative on that front. I completely forgot about that question too. But yeah, okay. See, th- that's where you'd have to create the persona, and then your move would come from it. As a pro wrestler, I would love just be, just to be a dick and just roast fans, mm-hmm. and just like That'd have everyone hate you with a passion. Yeah, mm. gentlemen, I want to refer you to a section of the world, and the section of the world. Wait, have you answered? The, is are you answering the question? Or oh, I'm answering going, the question. Okay, cool part. It's in it's in South America, and it's a 2,140 kilometer river. Online, this river is one of the longest rivers in South America at 2,140 kilometers, and it's known as the Orinoquia. And that's your signature move. Hold on. Okay. With 76.3% of it in Venezuela and the remainder in Colombia, it is the third largest river in the world by discharge volume of water. Now, that doesn't have too much, but the river is called Orinoco. And my entrance song would be Orinoco Flow by Enya. Wow. And if you guys don't know what the Orinoco Flow from Enya is, I'm going to play it. And it's probably going to get cut out of YouTube, but it's happening. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this song, gentlemen, has gone from a regular whatever song to a joke to possibly a meme. And now it's becoming like part of pop culture. And I'm going to have to like find the right spot to do it. Just give me a second. Oh, that one. Oh. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. You should have just said it. Yeah, but it's not from there. Yeah, but he, he used it. And just walking in, birds flying everywhere, and my signature move. It's exactly what Jake used. <laughs> I know when he walked into the yeah. thing, but I've used it in my video before that, so come on, Jake. Okay? Stealing my thing. And the move would be called the Orinoco Flow. And so because that river bends like this, I would do a move that encompasses the entire ring that flows through... With a neck grab with the legs, the classic one, and the sail away throws them off the ring. That is the Orinoco flow. All right. Pretty sure I won that match. No, you have a. So Bell always like used to compare you to Bobby Roode, and just when you go home, look up his entrance because it sounds like very similar to what you would do, oh, and perfect. just the way he like does it, and how slow and like methodical it is, and how like. Oh man, this guy seems like my dude. Then know, Bobby Roode look- is my dude. Yeah. Yeah, that was what it would be. It would be the Orinoco flow. Sail away. Sail away. Sail away. Sail away. Um, What else you guys got? Man, I've been watching Peaky Blinders. Very good. Peaky Blinders. I really like it. I'm almost done Modern Family. Yeah. Oh, hello. Enjoyable. Very. Right. Yeah, Peaky Blinders, I, I had a, never got into it. No, I'm, I'm on like season four, and I kind of always watch it, but I'm not like super, super invested in it. It's very well written. Mm-hmm. Production value is Unbelievable! I'm a fan of Killian Murphy. Yeah, uh, and everybody in it. It's really good. It's just it's got a really good cast. Sam Neill, Tom Hardy's in yeah. it. Yeah, that intro is oh, that intro song is so good. I just like that there's not actually a legitimate intro intro because it's yeah. just it just blends into the show and yeah, you just yeah. get going right away. I that's what I like about it. 
He's really good. Yeah, yeah. me. And then I'm my next of... next one after that, I'll be watching Chernobyl. Ah, uh, yes. Nice. Oh, yes. I need to do that soon, too. I started it, like, but then ended up, like, falling asleep halfway through episode one because it was really late. I just finished Daredevil and so couldn't be happier because she was gone for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized how codependent I am of her company because <laughs> I've been in the sitting in that condo in the dark doing reading. Like, I'd have a light on, obviously. But, like, playing my instrument, like I was talking about last week. And mm-hmm. then she came back yesterday and I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I actually have, like, something to do now. Someone, mm-hmm. some, someone to hang out with. Like, I'm not just sitting here by myself like a loser. <laughs> and I, I was re-watching Ouch. episodes of Daredevil again. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's super... Like I've told you, my whole life is very low key, extremely low key. I'm in that borderline. I'm in that realm between extreme laziness and being busy at the same time. I relate to that very much. Yeah, it's interesting. And then I, yeah, so while she was away, like I was re, I wasn't even watching anything new outside of Dark and Stranger Things. Once I finished that, I was like rewatching Daredevil, and it sucked because this time I couldn't call so f- Vanessa because every time I watch. Daredevil, I just keep calling her Vanessa. Yeah, time zones all close. the time. <laughs> well, dark surprised, hair. Surprised you just didn't call her up anyway. You know, I was thinking about it too, Vanessa. but um, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't feel like doing it that time. Or send her a soundbite. I know I should have. At least you'd have that. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> That's yeah. But uh, next time. Well, I will probably end up watching it again because it's so good, and then I can talk to her <laughs> about it. The one time we were kind of getting into a semi semi argument. But it wasn't really an argument. So I busted out the voice and I was doing it as like sometimes I have trouble expressing myself part. Wow. And so it completely cut the tension. It's like, Vanessa, I have troubles expressing myself. Wow. <laughs> She's just looking at me like, what the? Now you're doing this now? <laughs> and then it all stopped. See, it was that's great. like Michael. Like we were playing PlayStation two days ago. And I think I said, someone said something. I said, I'm glad. And I don't know why he knows all these Sam Raimi Spider-Man references, but there's a scene where Mary Jane is like on stage and she forgets the line. And someone goes, "I am glad," and, he's, <laughs> and she says, "I'm glad." He keeps saying, "I am glad." And I'm like, I don't understand. Like, what are you referencing? That's a really good. And he kept doing it. I don't hour. know what you're referencing. That's <laughs> great. Freaking. I wouldn't even like. That's my claim to like. That's that's what I like to do the most, and that's probably better than I can do. Good for him. You know, he kept like, and he also when he watched Daredevil, he, I think I didn't get a job. And he said, yeah, it's tough, really tough. Or something, he was quoting a bullseye line, and I wasn't that far in the series. I'm like, what the fuck are you quoting? <laughs> so you know. I'm like, no, I don't. Well, you'll find out. Yeah, no, yeah, the guy just yeah. fucking loves randomly referencing things. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Fun stuff. Fun stuff had by all. All right, that's it. Let's uh, let's close this out. All right. Uh, um, I don't know if that interview that I did... <sighs> Is going to be up uh, anytime soon. I don't know how soon it is. I believe Heidi's doing her rounds and stuff. But once again, I want to thank her. I don't know if she's listening, but I really want to thank her again for uh, for actually reaching out because uh, I don't know, it means a lot to me. It brings a tear to my eye. Tear to my eye and a tear to my thigh. Um, Xnade that. Um, all right. So yeah, please make sure that you're going over to the SAS Podcast Nest Podcast Network because you can find a lot of really cool podcasts. Uh, even if you're not from Saskatchewan, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Um, a lot of people talking about a lot of different stuff. Supposedly, there's one guy on there that does a podcast about how to build your deck. Like, he does this as a job. Mm. And the podcast is about deck building, which is really interesting. I feel like I couldn't listen to a podcast about building a deck. Well, I if you don't want to build a, a deck, why would you watch But listen, this is the you, thing about podcasts. You need to see it, though. This is the thing about podcasts, though. You need to go for the personalities. Okay. You don't, you go, you, like, you, you might go for the content, sure. But really, it's ultimately the personalities or the people that are there. Like you, you feel that connection with the person. Mm-hmm. It's like I like listening to this person. I care about this. Like I care about what this person's opinion is or whatever. Or I disagree with them, but I always get where he's coming from. I'm, that <coughs> me, I've been listening to a lot. Oh, oh Vanessa, <coughs> oh, wow. you hurt her. Um, wow. <coughs> Anyways, go on. Sugar water. When I was um, a child. <laughs> when I was a child. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so now I've been listening to people that I seriously disagree with on all things. But it's, like I it's still, not a matter of. It's just. If I want to build a deck, 
I don't. I want to see a video of it. But again, like I no, need to see. I watch HTV for that kind of shit. Listen, that's not the point. I'm just saying yeah. there's a lot of good. No, I'm, I'm just saying, there. but you're you you honed it on the but deck also, one. I'm like, I don't care about do it yourself. Talking about do it yourself. I need to see it. I'm saying. Well, I, I so guess no I mean shade to this like man. The range. So Clarify. you can come to the F word and go for. I have the nothing movies. against the man. I'm just telling you that to I me. Have a question, I'm though. a visual person, so I need to fi- I need to see a plan or I need to see a video about it. But also, and then I can. How many like episodes can you do based on building a deck? Well, I think it depends on how Different you parse style. them and, and how long they are. Ours are an hour long. Some people do 15-minute ones. Mm-hmm. Like the one guy in my work list in the podcast, and they're all 15 minutes a piece. Mm-hmm. So you can just do these little shorts. Um, there's tons of, like, there's like all Joe different Rogan. ranges. Joe Rogan's like three hours. But they just released, YouTube, yeah. well, they released the clips on YouTube, and those have been very popular, he said. Because he was saying, like, the YouTube thing, we literally just throw it out there. We don't look at or respond to the comments. We don't deal with any of that stuff. It's literally just another outlet to get the podcast out there. And he gets millions of views on it. Mm-hmm. Of course, his podcast is so good. It's amazing how many people just tune in just to listen to other other people talk about just anything. It's awesome. All uh, right, and to that, whether you go to the SAS Podcast Network to find us, or if you're finding us in other the other outlets that you're currently listening to, Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Castbox, Overcast, Pocket, Castbox, Being Radio Public, <gasps> and YouTube. We really, really appreciate it. If any of those give you the option to like or comment or anything of the sort, we'd really appreciate that. If that, if you don't feel like doing it, then it's all good. Go F all yourself. The same no, relax. Yeah, you yourself. need it. Uh, yeah, but we're hoping you're having an awesome day. Hoping to have an awesome weekend. Uh, hope you're safe and all that stuff. And again, once again, every single listener, we very much, very much appreciate it. Uh, go over to the Lazy Canadian at the Lazy Canadian, sorry, on Instagram. And then uh, you can always follow the F4 podcast on Instagram as well. And you can email us at the F4 podcast at gmail.com, which most people don't usually do. Or you can follow me on Twitter at the F words G. And that's it. 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 I'm G. I'm, um, yeah. I'm Vass. That was very lazy of you. I'm Canadian. And we're out. <laughs>